What are the responsibilities of chemical engineers? Chemical engineers are concerned with the designing, supervision, construction, installation and operation of plants and equipments for manufacturing chemical products. Chemical technologists deal with the production of substances with new properties which require new methods of production in the fields of petroleum refining and fertilizer technology. Chemical engineers involves in the processing of food and agricultural products, paints and dyes, recycling metals, glass and plastics, cosmetics, mineral-based industries and prevention and control of environmental hazards. Chemical engineers involves in the research and development activities in the biotech firms to find out new drugs. Can you explain the flameless oxidizers? These are used to treat volatile organic compounds, VOC, and liquid organic streams. Traditionally, these types of streams were combusted to break down the molecules. The disadvantage of this treatment method was the formation of NOx. Flameless oxidizers use electrically heated ceramic packing and a high-velocity introduction system to initiate the destruction of the organic compounds into carbon dioxide and water. Once this oxidation reaction begins, it continues via self-perpetuation. Capital cost for such systems is usually about 25% less than traditional combustion systems and capacities can range from 250 to 40,000 SCFM, standard cubic feet per minute. Thermatrix Inc. is the pioneer for this technology. Which type of compounds are responsible for the foul smells from wastewater plants? The following compounds are responsible for the foul smells from wastewater plants. Hydrogen sulfide, methyl mercapan, dimethyl sulfide, dimethyl disulfide. Can you define TLV threshold limit value and it explain? The threshold limit value was set by American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, Inc., ACGIH, which is defined as the level of concentration of a chemical substance in which a worker can work without an unreasonable risk of disease or injury. It can be expressed in ppm or milligram per cubic meter. For example, the TLV of chlorine for an 8 hours work day is 0.5 ppm or 1.5 milligrams per cubic meter which indicates a worker can work without any unreasonable risk of disease or injury for 8 hours if and only the chlorine concentration in his, her vicinity is within 0.5 ppm. What do you understand by wet bulb globe temperature? It is used to measure the sultriness of the environment. The sultriness is calculated on the basis of the humidity effects, the air speed and temperature and also the sun backquote s radiant heating factor. The sultriness in some cases could be fatal and hence it is very important to keep this under consideration. The wet bulb globe temperature index number was developed in the 1950 backquote S and is now accepted as an industry standard. It is comprised of three temperature readings, wet bulb temperature, ordinary dry bulb temperature, black bulb globe temperature. What is the difference between fractionation and distillation? Fractionation and distillation both methods are used to separate the components present in the solution based on the melting points. Distillation, it is used when boiling point of chemicals are different in the mixtures. Fractionation, it is used when boiling point of chemicals are close to each other in the mixtures. Fractionation, fractionation distillation mostly used in petroleum industry. What is oxidation and reduction reaction? Oxidation, when there is a loss of hydrogen or electrons, OR gain of oxygen is known as oxidation reaction. Reduction, when there is a gain of hydrogen or electron OR loss of oxygen is known as reduction reaction Example of oxidation reduction reaction is observed in human body, when an electron is transferred into the cell and oxidation of glucose take place from which we get the energy. What is the difference between CFM and SCFM? CFM, cubic feet per minute, and SCFM, standard cubic feet per minute, are both measure of flow rate. CFM might refer to either the flow rate of a gas or a liquid, whereas SCFM refers only to the flow rate of a gas. The same mass flow rate of a gas, i.e., pound per minute, is equivalent to various volumetric flow rates, i.e., CFM, depending upon the gas pressure and temperature. Thus, when gas flow rates are specified, it is very important to specify at what pressure and temperature the gas was measured. When the gas flow rate is specified as SCFM, it means that the flow rate was measured at a set of standard pressure and temperature conditions. In the USA, the most common set of standard conditions used in industry is 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 1 atmosphere of pressure. Note that we have stressed most common, because there are other standard conditions that may be used. It is always best to spell out what standard condition. S are being used, i.e., 1200 SCFM at 600 F and 1 atmosphere pressure. When gas flows are expressed simply as CMF, the reader is can only speculate as to what gas temperature and pressure apply to that flow rate, and, because of that, the CFM flow rate cannot be converted to a mass flow rate. What is the maximum recommended velocity for steam in a plant pipe network? 
high pressure steam should be limited to about 150 feet per second and low pressure steam should be limited to about 100 feet sec saturated steam at low pressure is common for heating services and secondary process pipes 99 to 131 feet sec saturated steam at high pressure is common in powerhouse boiler and main process lines 82 to 131 feet sec superheated steam is common in power generation and turbine plants is 100 to 300 feet sec Saturated steam at peak load is less than 164 feet, sec. How can you keep our seawater used for heat rejection clean before entering our heat exchanges? Seawater is used as a cooling agent in condensers and coolers. Intermittent injection of chlorine gas is used to eliminate marine growth. The system is a once-through type. The band screens before the suction of the pumps are supposed to eliminate scales and other suspended materials. The band screens are not properly functioning. Cooling water flow is about 2.6 million gallons per hour. The pre-screening and mobile screens are not a sufficient protection for the recirculating water. This is a very common problem. In clean salt water the biological grow in the cooling water pipes is the main problem, mussels, barnacle, algae, etc. After the life cycle is finished, they die and blocking the condenser tubes. To solve this debris problems, use self-cleaning debris filters, DF, directly installed in front of the water box of the heat exchangers. We have some pieces of metals that have been powder coated. How does that work? Powder coatings are similar to paint, but they are usually much more durable. Rather than adding a solvent to the pigments and resins in paint, as is typically the case, powder coatings are applied to the surface in a fine granular form. They are typically sprayed on so that they stick to the surface. Once the surface has been sufficiently spray coated, the piece is baked at high temperatures, and the pigment and resins pieces melt and form a durable color layer. What is the chemical composition of fat in human body? Fat found in human body is mainly composed of glycerides, glycerides plus phospholipids, glycolipids, phosphoenoticides, tocopherol. Why graphite rod is used in nuclear reactor? Graphite rod is used in nuclear reactor to convert fast moving neutrons into thermal neutrons. What is iron ore consisting of? Iron ore is consisting of iron 3 oxide iron ores are rocks and minerals from which metallic iron can be economically extracted. The ores are usually rich in iron oxides and vary in color from dark gray, bright yellow, or deep purple to rusty red. The iron itself is usually found in the form of magnetite, MULTIVA, LENTFE3O4, 72.4% Fe, hematite, iron 3 oxide, 69.9% Fe, gothite, Fe, O, 62%. Fe, limonite, Fe, O, O, N, H, 2, O, 55% Fe, or ciderite, iron 2 carbonate, 48.2% Fe. What is the difference between unit operation and unit process? When a unit operation is considered, changes take place in mass and concentration where energy is provided from an external source without any chemical change. Few examples would be evaporation, distillation, and mixing. In the same manner, when a unit process is considered, the reactant is processed in the feed which means that reactants present in the feed are transformed to products by means of chemical reaction and with the assistance of energy being supplied to the system. Can you explain a solvent? A solvent can be defined as a liquid which has the capability to suspend, dissolve or to take out other chemicals where they do not perform any chemical change to the material or solvent. The main process of solvents is to clean, apply, process or to separate materials. Can you define Gibbs free energy? Gibbs free energy is mentioned as the maximum amount of mechanical work or available energy which is done by the system under stable temperature and pressure. Can you explain the characteristics that affect the flow of bulk solids and how? Some characteristics that affect the flow of bulk solids are moisture content where enhanced moisture content in solids makes bulk solids sticky. Absorption of the moisture sometimes by the atmosphere by some solids happens. The other characteristic is a temperature where it affects bulk solids at times when they are exposed to a specific temperature. Time at rest is a way which affects the solids when they are kept still or rest. The more rest they take, the more slowly the flow of bulk solids takes place. Particle size is one characteristic where it is easy to handle round particles than the odd and asymmetric ones. What are some common causes of gas pipeline vibration 20 carbon steel line? The upper pressure range and, or the smaller pipe diameters prompts to investigate the possibility that the gas is reaching critical flow somewhere downstream within the pipe. When a gas gets to critical flow, sonic booms, producing vibration, are expected. In fact, one of the main means by which the additional pressure in the pipe is lost. If the source is a compressor, look for surging.
If the source is a tower, look for pressure cycling in the tower. Look at critical flow through any control valve that may be in the line. At what temperature does water have maximum density? At 40 C the density of water is 1000 kg. Come. Define octane number. It is the resistance to detonation of a fuel in a spark ignition engine compared to the isooctane N-heptane mixture. What is the most common cause of solid size segregation in bulk solid systems? Many engineers usually point directly to the pneumatic conveying system as a source of such a problem. The truth is that in most cases, segregation occurs because of the differences in sizes of the articles. As a rule of thumb, if the size ratio extends outside of around 1 is to 1.3, then there will most likely be segregation. This being said, one should inspect the equipment responsible for determining the particle size rather than the pneumatic conveying system if this problem is occurring. List the advantages and disadvantages of a PFR. Advantages of PFR are continuous operation, high conversion rate, less cost for operation. Disadvantages of PFR are temperature gradients, high maintenance cost. What industry require filtered compressed air? Almost every chemical process, power plant food processing ETC. Plant has some type of air-operated device from control valves to air-operated pumps and all have an air compressor delivering filtered air. What are some common problems associated with dense phase pneumatic conveying? Dense phase pneumatic conveying typically experiences one common problem from system to system, plugging in the line due to a malfunctioning booster valve. Dense phase systems require these booster systems to introduce new, pressurized air. These boosters are nearly always accompanied by a check valve. If the check valve becomes stuck, the product is allowed to plug the line. What are some common problems associated with dilute phase pneumatic conveying? Probably the most common problem encountered in dilute phase pneumatic conveying is the wearing of the rotary valve that serves as an airlock where the product is introduced into the system. If excess air is allowed to pass by the rotary valve, this can cause bridging of the material the flow can be slowed or stopped. What is the most common carrier gas used in pneumatic conveying? While many applications utilize air as a carrier gas, others are not suited for using air. For example, if the substance being conveyed reactions with moisture in the air or if there is a threat of dust explosions, nitrogen is likely choice. Can you define the third law of thermodynamics? The third law states that, as a system approaches absolute zero, the entropy of the system approaches a minimum value. We have some pieces of metals that have been powder coated. How does that work? Powder coatings are similar to paint, but they are usually much more durable. Rather than adding a solvent to the pigments and resins in paint, as is typically the case, powder coatings are applied to the surface in a fine granular form. They are typically sprayed on so that they stick to the surface. Once the surface has been sufficiently spraying coated, the piece is baked at high temperatures, and the pigment and resins pieces melt and form a durable color layer. How can you keep our seawater used for heat rejection clean before entering our heat exchanges? Seawater is used as a cooling agent in condensers and coolers. Intermittent injection of chlorine gas is used to eliminate marine growth. The system is a once-through type. The band screens before the suction of the pumps are supposed to eliminate scales and other suspended materials. The band screens are not properly functioning. NG. Cooling water flow is about 2.6 million gallons per hour. The pre-screening and mobile screens are not a sufficient protection for the recirculating water. This is a very common problem. In clean salt water the biological grow in the cooling water pipes is the main problem, mussels, barnacle, algae, etc. After the life cycle is finished, they die and blocking the condenser tubes. To solve this debris problems, use self-cleaning debris filters, DF, directly installed in front of the water box of the heat exchangers. What are some common problems associated with dense phase pneumatic conveying? Dense phase pneumatic conveying typically experiences one common problem from system to system, plugging in the line due to a malfunctioning booster valve. Dense phase systems require these booster systems to introduce new, pressurized air. These boosters are nearly always accompanied by a check valve. If the check valve becomes stuck, the product is allowed to plug the line. Can you define critical radius of insulation? The critical radius of insulation is the thickness of an insulation that does not affect the convection resistance. It is the ratio of the thermal conductivity of the insulator to the convection heat transfer coefficient. Define, saltation velocity, and how is it used in designing pneumatic conveying systems? The saltation velocity is defined as the actual gas velocity, in a horizontal pipe run, at which the particles of a homogeneous solid flow will start to fall out of the gas stream. In designing, the saltation velocity is used as a basis for choosing the design gas velocity in a pneumatic conveying system. Usually, the saltation gas velocity is multiplied by a factor, 
which is dependent on the nature of the solids to arrive at a design gas velocity. For example, the saltation velocity factor for fine particles may be about 2.5 while the factor could be as high as 5 for coarse particles such as soybeans could. Can you define pneumatic conveying? Pneumatic conveying is a method of moving bulk solids from one place to another with the help of a carrier gas. A differential pressure is applied inside a conveying line. The floor always moves from a region of higher to lower pressure. Explain the working of a spray condenser. A spray condenser is used for the condensation of humid water vapor by direct contact with water. The inlet water is at a temperature less than the dew point of air in the chamber. Are there any general rules for flushing slurry lines? Slurry lines should be flushed with a minimum fluid velocity of 10 feet per second and the total flushing liquid volume should equal 3 to 6 times the total piping volume. Can you explain barometric condenser? Single-stage or multi-stage steam jet ejectors are often used to create a vacuum in a process vessel. The exhaust from such ejector systems will contain steam, and perhaps other condensable vapors, as well as non-condensable vapors. Such exhaust streams can be routed into a barometric condenser, which is a vertical vessel where the exhaust streams are cooled and condensed by direct contact with downward-flowing cold water injected into the top of the vessel. The vessel is installed so that its bottom is at least 34 feet, 10.4 meters, above the ground, and the effluent cooling water and condensed vapors flow through a 34-foot length of vertical pipe called a barometric leg, into small tank called a hot well. The barometric leg allows the effluent coolant and condensed vapors to exit no matter what the vacuum is in the process vessel. Such a system is called a barometric condenser. The non-condensable vapors are withdrawn from the top of the condenser by using a vacuum pump or perhaps a small steam ejector. The effluent coolant and condensed vapors are removed from the hot well with a pump. Can you explain condensate lift? This is a term that is usually used to indicate how much pressure is required to lift condensate from a steam trap or other device to its destination at a condensate return line or condensate vessel. Like share and comment. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Click the bell button for latest updates.